Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today we are going to be learning how to control DMX lighting and other fixtures from within Ableton Live. Let's hop into the studio and get started. Awesome guys, so first things first, we're gonna have to cover some prerequisites and things you're gonna have to understand before we can start programming these lights. So we're just gonna hop right into that so you guys can get it out of the way and start programming your lights. Okay, so stage lights and most programmable lighting features operate on a protocol called DMX. Think of DMX as the MIDI of live lighting. While MIDI carries digital audio control signals to various musical instruments, DMX carries control signals to control lighting and other stage fixtures. MIDI operates on a musical scale containing values between C0 and G10, with each individual note of the 10 octave chromatic scale carrying an individual control signal. DMX, on the other hand, operates in a slightly different manner. Most DMX controllers utilize 512 control channels. Almost all DMX lighting configurations operate in lighting chains. Each light or fixture is daisy chained via DMX and is assigned specific pieces of that 512 channels mentioned earlier, called a DMX address. Each DMX address and channel amount is different according to the light or fixture you're using. Each channel affects a different parameter of the light or fixture found within that address. DMX addresses must be set so that no lights have overlapping channels. This process can be repeated with as many lights as you want until you hit 512 control channels, at which point you will need a multi-channel or secondary DMX controller. Now traditionally, lighting control was a completely separate entity from live audio, as they are two completely proprietary formats that require two different types of control schemes. In recent years, however, companies like Antec with their DMXs are bridging the gap between audio and visual lighting control in a live setting, allowing for DMX control via a traditionally audio format VST plugin. The DMX essentially converts traditional MIDI control signals into DMX control signals. The Entech DMX is the star of today's video and is the reason we are able to control lights and fixtures from within Ableton Live. Cool, so now we're caught up, let's jump right in and start programming your lights. So what you're going to need is at least one fixture supporting the DMX protocol, some dedicated DMX cables, now these are not XLR cables, that is a confusion that a lot of people have. DMX cables are a different level of impedance and using XLR cables with your DMX lights will cause a ton of problems down the line. You also need a DMX chain terminator, a MIDI to DMX converter, in our case the Entech DMXs, and obviously Ableton Live. It's a good idea to brush up on Ableton Live as many techniques of this tutorial mirror that of producing a track in Ableton. To start things off, plug your DMXs into the computer and install the Entech DMXs program as well as their VST plugin. The latter is vital to controlling your lights from within Ableton Live. The links to these programs are in the description below. The next step is to plug the DMXs into your light via a DMX control line and then plugging in a DMX terminator to the DMX out jack on the fixture. This is crucial to let your DMX controller that there's no more lights in the chain. If you don't use a terminator, you may get some strange problems or not be able to control your lights at all. Third, you're going to want to reference the manual for your light or find it online. You'll need to know how many control channels your light utilizes for proper setup in DMXs. Next, we'll have to make sure the first light is in DMX control mode and is set to DMX channel 1. Instructions on how to do this can be found in your light's manual. Alternatively, if your light has a numerical display, look for something that resembles D000 and change the value to D001. That's how you set your DMX address. So next we're going to launch Ableton Live and open the plugin we installed earlier. Let's load in the instrument version for now. And we can do it with an effects channel if you are using an audio channel instead of a MIDI channel, but I like to use the instrument version. So the first time you launch the DMX's program or VST plugin, you're going to get this prompt here. It says hardware ID. You notice I blurred mine out, but you're going to be able to see yours and you're going to copy that. You're going to go to this website right here, www.entech.com slash DMX's unlock. You can go and see this is what the website actually is going to look like. I'm going to actually type in my hardware ID and then add my email and then we can actually start using the device. So once you put in the code and your email, you're going to get this prompt here. It gives you a DMX's unlock code. You're going to copy this, paste it into the plugin and hit OK. Now the DMX's is unlocked and started transmitting DMX data. 
So the first setup process from within DMX is, is to right click on this first channel here. Now remember we set the DMX address on the first lamp to DMX channel 001. This is one right here and as you can see if we scroll all the way over this goes all the way up to 512. Like I said there's 512 channels on most DMX controllers. DMX is not an exception to that. So what we have to do is actually assign these five or however many channels according to whatever light you're using to that lamp we're using and DMX has made it extremely easy all we have to do is right click and we hit fixture library and then we load the um, fixture that we have based on the manufacturer and you know the actual device if your device is not found on this list there's a great online open source community where you can find files for almost every light in existence as a last resort you can also create your own light library via referencing your manual and labeling controls manually if you do run into this situation, I encourage you to save and upload your light library to the community so that other people that get that light later on will have it to use down the road instead of having to manually program their lights. If you do need to install those new lighting fixtures, go ahead and download them from that website I linked in the description below. And then you'll get a folder of the manufacturer containing the light that you downloaded. I actually have three lamps from the exact same manufacturer. What I'm going to do is copy it. And in order to install it, we have to go to our hard drive. On Mac, we go to Library, Application Support. Then we find NTEC. And then we're going to go to DMXs. You go to DMXs Library or DMX Library. And then you just paste it in there. Um, let me just drag it, actually. Now on a PC, you just have to do the exact same thing, but it'll be located in your program files x86 folder, and you'll just have to drag it into the NTEC folder, the DMX library folder within that NTEC folder in your program files x86 folder. Now we can actually go ahead and do fixture library, and we can load in the one we just installed. This is the mini rotating head 14 channel. I'm gonna go ahead and load that, and as you can see, DMX is automatically fills out all of the channels that the light uses. We have pan, level dim, tilt, speed, uh, this is for flashing, dim, uh, red, green, blue, white, colors, uh, color splash. It's all about reading the manual of your lamp and figuring out what they do. Red, green, blue, and white is pretty obvious. These are the RGB channels. And then the dim for these is right here where we can actually control the brightness of the lamp itself. So this is basically the basics of DMX control here. As you can see, this is channel 1 through 14. If we were to add another light to the DMX chain, we can either start 15, 16, or anything later on. I actually tend to do it into the next line here. I wouldn't start another light here. But if we wanted to, we can load in another fixture. Let's say we have a, another one of these here, and we load it right here. As you can see, it carries over and now ends on 28. Um, we can actually unload that by clicking and doing the exact same thing we just did, no fixture, and then it clears it out. But I like to do it on the next line here. And again, you can do that on any line following, you just cannot have them overlapping. If you have a channel right here and you start the next light, this parameter dim will also be the exact same parameter as this lamp here. And then you'll run into issues with conflict of different channels. And when you control one fader, it might move three different things on different lights. So make sure that all of your lights are on their own channels. So what we can do now is actually go into the arrangement view and make a clip. We can highlight a region and press command shift M or control shift M on Mac. Um, and then we're going to double click and then we can see the actual MIDI, as you can see down here, we aren't going to use this at all. We're only going to be using the MIDI automation. So what we're going to do is go into the DMXS plugin here. And as you can see, all of these channels now correspond to light parameters on the device itself. To start things off, let's actually see this thing pan around a little bit. And as you can see, the pan control now controls the pan of the device. We can actually do a tilt as well. And we have the red, green, blue, and white controls here. We can turn these up. And in order to see this, we're actually going to have to turn the dim on. As you can see, we go dim all the way up to 100%. On this particular lamp, your lamp might have a different control. Again, reference the manual to see exactly what control does what. We're going to up to 100%. As you can see on this particular lamp, if I go past that, it starts to strobe. We don't want to strobe. We want it to be at 100% right there. 
So this, as you can see, is very powerful because it is parented within a VST plugin. We can actually automate each one of these parameters from within Ableton Live Clips. So as you can see, if I drag the R down or the G down or the B down, you can start to see the color change on the lamp itself. And we can actually, as you can see, visualize that line moving as an automation lane in Ableton. What I actually suggest before starting to actually move these points around is to actually bust this instrument into a group. We're going to do group just so we can have some macros. Now the reason why we do this, let's just say down the line you change your DMX channel configuration here. So let's say that this lamp moves down to 23 or you add another lamp that is exactly the same and you want to do the exact same controls on that lamp. If we actually start to program via channels, as you can see they're listed here, channel 8, channel 9, channel 10, and that would mean that when, whenever we move anything around we're going to have to move all the automation lanes to the new lanes that correspond to that light. If we actually automate macros and then apply these macros to these uh, DMX's channels, we can actually change which channels we put these on and then reassign the macros instead of moving all the automations around later. So what I'm going to do is actually go to this button right here, hit configure, and we're going to highlight, let's say, R, G, B, white, and then maybe the dimmer for the dim control and then we'll do a pan and tilt control. So what we're going to do is actually start naming these and mapping them. So this is actually the tilt control. I'm going to map that here to macro one. Let's name this tilt. Macro two is pan. That's this one here. We're going to hit map and this is pan. Then macro three here, which is six is I believe the dim. Yep, the dim control. And we actually don't need the dim control. The dim control can be set to 100%. We can control the dim of the lamps uh, via the RGB and W values. If we set them all to zero, it'll be completely black. But let's just set it anyway, just for the sake of doing so. Dim map rename to dim. And as you can see, the light went blank because this is set to zero. And as you can see, if we turn this all the way up, we can start to see that strobe effect because it's bringing that knob all the way to the top. We're going to have to compensate for that up here. Let's see if we can find where the dim 100% is when we start to bring the maximum value of that fader down. I think it's around 53.53. And as you can see, now it's at dim strobe zero. Maybe let's try 52 again. Oops, 0.52. That should be dim 100%. So now, as you can see, when this is all the way up, it's going to reach dim 100. We can turn this down, and you can see that controls that fader right there. Now let's actually map the RGB controls. Let's do uh, this one here. This is the, I believe, the R. Let's see. Yes, the R. Map to R. Actually, I'm not going to map that uh, this, to this one here. I'm actually going to clear that. Um, and map it to this one just so it would be on another line and we can have RGB W together. So let's actually map 7 to this and we're going to name this R and we're going to do it here as well. Map to rename B and the third one duh, G, G, not W. And then for the white control, that's this one. So. So in the future, if you ever want to change these particular parameters around and make the lights do different things, or if you add more lights in the future, you can just essentially remap these uh, controls to whichever faders there are, like let's say 24 later on. Cool, so that should do the trick now. We can see we can pan the light around with the pan control, tilt it with the tilt control, turn up the R, G, and B, as you know, or I'm sorry, G, B and R. Um, as you know, R, G, and B together makes white, but there's also an independent white control on this lamp itself. So that is essentially the basics of it. Now, what we can actually do is start to automate these uh, eight lanes or seven lanes rather um, within Ableton here. We could have actually automated these faders like I said earlier, but that would have been very messy if you wanted to change anything down the road. So we're actually going to do is go to R, oops, make a new lane, G, Move it really quick. Oops, there we go. There we go. And put these in order of what makes sense, RGB. And then we can add the white. Let's do that here. 
and then we can add the pan control the tilt control and the dim control so now as you can see all of these so now as you can see all these MIDI automation lanes control the light that we are using so if I drag one of these up you can see it's going to have that effect on the lamp itself and then let's turn up the I don't know the red and you can see that right here and as you know if you produce music in Ableton you can actually draw in the automation lanes and when you play it it'll start to do that um, automation gradually so as you can see that red is now fading up gradually cool and then let's actually rotate it a little bit just so you can see it a little bit more and there's that red and then you can see if I make this this line right here a more direct curve you can see it starts to fade up very quickly now you can see how this can be powerful because if we drag in an audio clip or something like that we can start to program the lights to the beat of the clip so for an example, I went ahead and dragged in a few bars from Community from my latest EP, Illuminate. If you guys want to check that out, you can click on the link in the upper right-hand corner right now. So we can actually use this audio clip here to start programming some light effects in. So let's just say that we want the white to flash on every beat. To do so, let's actually use the Draw tool and make a white flash maybe on every beat. We'll do a quarter note. I believe that is yes that's a quarter note and we're going to duplicate and then we're going to highlight and duplicate again and again and again until we get to the end here we can highlight again copy and paste and then we can actually see that quarter note beat and as you can see now the white and red are flashing on every beat we can make this thing tilt as it does it that would be an interesting effect let's actually automate the tilt control of the lamp as it goes along like this Maybe we'll do this and then duplicate that again and again. And you can also borrow different automations from different lanes. So if you wanted to make the pan, you can actually make it follow the exact same control as the tilt here. I'm just trying to keep it forward so you guys can see what we're doing. So let's make it tilt as we go and then um, flash. And you guys can immediately see the value of this and how powerful it can be in the setting of a live show. Now, because this is Ableton Live and all these automations are contained within the clip, let's actually go ahead and collapse this. We can actually copy this clip into our session view and then paste it. Let's name it something here. Let's name it uh, Tilt and Quarter Flash. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then maybe put the audio clip in here we can actually use this in a live set. So if we were to highlight these two together, group them, name this, let's say, community section, and we trigger it, we actually can trigger that audio and visual together now. And then we can stop them together. And as you can see, that is very powerful, and you can actually make individual lighting clips to control your lights for every single scene of your song. If you guys aren't familiar with the scenes and live performance, make sure to check out my video series on live performing in Ableton Live. It's a series I did before this series, kind of as a prerequisite, and if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check that out in the link in the upper right-hand corner right now. So there's one more thing to cover. If you guys want to add more lights in the future, you can go ahead and do that just by doing the exact same thing we just did here. Load in the lighting effect and then maybe add these separate parameters here. Let's say the dim control, we can map that to the same exact dim controller here. The RGB can map there. There's a ton of possibilities. If you don't plan on actually using the macros, you can actually manually do all of these controls yourself within individual automations. But the power of the VST format in the DMX world is insane, and DMXs has made it possible to do something that's never been uh, easily achieved before. Awesome, guys. So that just about wraps up this video. Thanks again to Ntech for supplying the DMXs used in this video. Links to the device can be found in the description below. If this video helped you out, give it a like, leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments below and any comments or critiques as well. If you want to help me out, consider supporting me on Patreon. You get some awesome exclusive benefits like uh, seeing videos early before they get uploaded on YouTube and some other cool stuff. We also have a Facebook community. If you guys want to suggest future videos and I don't see them in the YouTube comments, you can go in that community and add them as a post there. 
cool guys it's been great i am julian of julian gray media thank you for watching and until next time i will talk to you later bye bye I'm just a fool.